Hi, I'm Mary Valamides, and I'm going to tell you about the third six weeks curriculum preview for third grade for mathematics. The very first day of the third six weeks will be the Math CBA. That'll be November 14th. Then we'll finish Unit 4 with division with just a couple of days from Module 12 and then Module 13. So we'll be dividing by 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, and 9 for those 13, for those 10 days. We'll start with 3.4H. Notice there's two types of divisions. One, a set of objects is partitioned into, into equal shares. This means that the number of groups is unknown. An example of this is given. Cheryl has 15 slices of apples. She wants to put them on plates in groups. How many plates will she need? The other type of division is when a set of objects is shared equally. This time, the number of items in each group is unknown. So Cheryl had 15 slices of apples and three lunch bags. She wants to put the same number of apples in each bag. How many slices of apples will she put in each bag? This was tested on STAR 2016, and our kids did very well, 82%. This was the fifth highest scoring item. Now on 3.4K, notice that we're given specific models to use. We can use objects, pictorial models that include arrays, area models, and equal groups, property of operations, and recall of facts. So the following will give us an example of those. So here's the problem. Katie and her dad took two of Katie's friends to the movies with them. The cost of the movie was $5. Candy was $4. Katie's dad did not get candy, but everyone else did. If Katie's dad paid for all three of them to go and for the candy, how much did Katie's dad spend? Well, here's an example of taking that amount, taking this problem and using equal groups. So if you look at the bottom of the pictorial model, we have four people times five dollars each. So we're using uh, the two colors, two sided count counters to do this with five in each group and notice there's four groups because there's four people. Then we have one with three people at four dollars each so therefore we have our three groups representing three people with four in each representing four dollars. You can also use arrays for this same problem or area models. Notice that the total number of squares in the grids would be the total amount spent. Then the other strategy mentioned was properties of operations, where you can write four people times five dollars plus three people times four dollars. You basically have four times five plus four times three, or four times five plus three, which is four times eight, which is thirty-two. Now recall of facts is another way we could do this if the kids really know 4 times 5 is 20 and 3 times 4 is 12. Just add those two numbers together. That's where we want to get to is having the kids know these facts with automaticity. Now 3.4K, uh, this item was the 11th lowest scoring item with 64% mastery. Notice it is a multi-step problem. This item, the kids did a little bit better with 74%. Mrs. Lasoya has 72 index cards. She will arrange the cards in six equal stacks. Notice that this is just a one-step problem, whereas before this was a multi-step problem. We did have a released item as well in 2015. Now text 3.5b will be the next text you will be teaching and this is representing and solving one and two step multiplication and division problems within 100 using arrays, strip diagrams, and equations. So read the problem at the bottom for just a second. Okay, this problem can be shown with arrays. Notice we have five columns with ten in each. Uh, sorry, we have we had ten. We have five columns with ten in each. We could use strip diagrams. Again, ten sections, five in each, or writing equations. We have number of pages times five equals fifty. 
Now 3.5B was tested on STAR. It, we had 43% mastery. Notice it's the second lowest scoring item. The correct answer was F. So the kids need a lot of practice with strip diagrams. Also, number 24 was our sixth lowest where they had to choose the equation. So the kids really need to be exposed to all three types. The next text we'll be teaching is 3.4J, where the kids are going to determine a quotient using the relationship between multiplication and division. So they have to think of 4 times 5 is 20, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. One way to help with this activity is that there, these cards are available in Texas Go Math Resources, where the kids have the triangular fact cards. They put their thumb over one of the numbers, and then they make the multiplication and division fact from it. So we know that third grade needs to know their multiplication facts with automaticity. So I hope you're working with that, possibly having a workstation available where they're, they're practicing their fact fluency facts. Now module 13, lesson 5, does use UPS check. However, it doesn't really demonstrate how to, to check. Remember that when we are working with UPS check, we don't have to check with the inverse operation. What we're doing is we make sure that we did find what we said we needed to find and understand, and then we did follow our plan that we chose in the plan section, the strategy that we chose. Now when we do that, when we want to check our problem, we could use a different strategy if we'd like to check our, our problem. Also notice in module 13 that we're going to be used uh, in module 13 lesson 5 it uses variables for the answer but third graders are tested only with an empty box not with a variable so make sure that they're exposed to having an empty box for their possibility of an answer choice. Notice that it's, this was tested on STAR in 2016 we had 78 percent mastery with this item. Some vocabulary words with this particular part of the unit that you might want to make sure you go over are array, area model, strip diagrams, relationship, multiplication, division, quotient, and product. Unit 5 will cover fractions, and this will cover 16 days. We'll have 7 days before the holidays to do Module 2, and then 9 days after the holidays to do Module 3. So you'll be representing fractions before the winter break. And when we really, we want to focus on represent, because represent usually means there'll be a visual of some sort that you're going to be using to represent these fractions. And notice we're told it could be pictorial models, strip diagrams, and number lines. So here's an example of using area models, linear models, such as strip diagrams and number lines, and strip diagrams set models. This was tested on STAR. Notice it was our fourth highest scoring item. Notice this used an object on uh, number one in STAR. Text 3.3b says to determine the corresponding fraction greater than zero and less than or equal to one with denominators of two, three, four, six, and eight given a specified point on a number line. This is a good time to bring out the open, uh, open-ended number lines that you received from, um, from EAI when, last year with all of our manipulatives. Notice when we look at number lines, we're looking, we're counting the spaces, not the hash marks. So here's an example of how when you set up your number line, it has hooks that you can go ahead and attach the one half to the two fourths to the four eighths so the kids can see that those are all equivalent fractions. This was not assessed on STAR in 2016, so we really don't know what an item like that will look like. But luckily they're going to release the STAR test in 2017, so we may see an example of it. Text 3.3c uh, wants us to explain the unit fraction 1 over b. Unit fractions are where the numerator is 1 and the b, the denominator, re represents the equal parts that make uh, the whole. So we'll look at unit fractions now. Notice with this particular diagram at the bottom, we have 1 fourth and what we need to realize is that 1 fourth is, could be 
just the part, the gray part, that's not shaded in in this particular case because 1 4 stands for uh, 1 out of 4. This 2 was not assessed on STAR 2016. Then 3.3D, we have compose and decompose a fraction A over B with a numerator greater than 0 and less than or equal to B as a sum of parts 1 over B. So here it shows us where 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is the same as 3 fourths. So we're decomposing 3 fourths into the unit fractions using 1 fourth. This was on a star released item in 2015, but not assessed on star 2016. So we'll have to refer to this released item. 3.3e, we're going to solve problems involving partitioning an object or a set of objects among two or more recipients using pictorial representations of fractions with denominators 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. Now, here we're going to notice how the whole changes and how it affects the results of the following problems. Notice this particular problem where a student shares eight crackers with a friend. How many crackers will each of the students get? Notice our whole will be eight different crackers, so therefore we'll get four crackers for each. Here we have a student shares two crackers with a friend. How many crackers will each of the students get? Our whole is two and each student will get, get one cracker. A student shares a cracker with a friend. How many crackers will each student get? Now we have the whole being one, so each student will only get a half of a cracker. But what if a student has two crackers with two friends? How many crackers will each friend get? Okay, now if you look at the bottom, on the diagram, two crackers with two friends. So a student with two friends makes it three people. So three people sharing two crackers, we'd have to divide the crackers into thirds. So we would have one third plus one third, or two thirds of a cracker. This was tested on STAR. Notice our kids scored 67% on this item. Then after winter break, we're going to be comparing fractions for 10 days. So if we look at 3.3H, we're going to be comparing fractions. When we compare fractions, remember the numerator will stay the same or the denominator will stay the same. So looking at these two diagrams, you have to justify the conclusion using symbols, words, objects, or pictorial models. So the kids could explain why they think that 3 fourths is more than 3 eighths, or they would use the symbols where it would be 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths, or they would look at the pictorial models and objects to show that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. Here we're using strip diagrams. Notice here we want to make sure the kids know that if it's 1 fourth and 1 half, kids get the misconception that 4 means more than 2, but which is true normally, but we're saying 1 fourth is not more than one half. Here the four is showing you how many equal parts there are and there's four versus just two. So therefore the two would be the bigger portion than just one-fourth. So one-half is more than one-fourth. Now here we're having, at the, notice the bottom item, we have the same denominator this time. So now we're asking, since they're all equal parts, what would be less, one-fourth or three-fourths? Of course, now since we have equal parts, now the one-fourth would be less because having three would be more than one of those parts. This is a hard concept for some of the kids, so make sure you're showing this with strip diagrams, with models, so they can visualize what's really happening. We did have a released item in 2015, however this wasn't tested on STAR. And notice we have a number line to demonstrate one-third and one-half, what the, the comparison is between those two fractions. 3.3H, it was tested, 72% mastery on this item. Notice this is the verbal form of description. 
Then it was tested with number 41, where we have the pictorial form. 3.3F says to represent equivalent fractions with denominators of 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. Here we're looking, basically using the same types of uh, models, the variety of objects, pictorial models, and number lines. This time we're really focusing on equivalent fractions. That's the major difference between this text and the one we just looked at. So if we look at these two number lines, both number lines represent 3 fourths. So we can see that the red, the number line with the red shading shows 3 fourths. But if we look at the one with the green shading, it also has that same portion of the number line, which is 6 eighths. So 3 fourths is equivalent to 6 eighths. We could use strip diagrams. And here we have strip diagrams with a number line. However, we could just shade in strip diagrams. Number lines and then models. So we want to make sure that the kids are exposed to all types of these varieties so they can see what an equivalent fraction really looks like. This was tested on STAR. It was the eighth highest scoring item with 80% mastery. Notice with these particular items it's only going to stay within one. So it won't be greater than one when we're looking at fractions. Number 25 used pictorial models we did have 78% mastery. Now 3.3G is an important text that really the kids really need to understand. And this might take a, a few examples. So they need to be able to explain that two fractions are equivalent if and only if they are both represented by the same point on a number line or they represent the same portion of the same size whole for an area model. If you look at the very bottom diagram, you'll see that one half of a mini pizza is not the same size as possibly one fourth of an extra large pizza. So here we have an example where one fourth is greater than one half. But we don't want to have kids comparing items that are not the same whole because uh, normally one half would be greater than one fourth. So this may become confusing, but just make sure that they realize that it has to be the same size of a whole for us to make a true comparison. 3.3G was not assessed on STAR 2016, but we did have a released item. Three point three B says to determine the corresponding fraction greater than zero and less than or equal to one with denominators of two, three, four, six, and eight, given a specified point on a number line. Here the kids will locate points on the number line that represent fractions less than one. Notice here that we don't start with the zero being co colored in red. We start with the A. So we're looking at which letter represents three sixths on the number line. Well, if we know that 3 sixths is equivalent to 1 half, we can find 1 half of this number line. Or we can count the spaces in between the letters and see that there are 3 for the numerator, which would land on C. 3.3b was not assessed on STAR. Now, I want to make sure that everyone has the posters and strategy posters that were given. If you have not received the UPS poster or the strategy poster, please let me know. Email Mary Valamides so that I can make sure you get those posters. Also, please go back and check in Eduphoria. I've added some things for UPS check. Notice that this is something that you can actually give the kids to put in their journals or put it on their desk so that they can ask themselves these questions as they struggle with certain problems. Also, I've updated the, the sheet that says what teachers and students say and do with UPS check so that you can use this to kind of guide you as you ask kids, prob ask kids the questions for UPS check. Now these resources are all available in Forethought. If you go in Forethought, go to Yearly Content Documents, District Instructional Resources, and then click UPS Check. When you do, then you'll see the gear at the bottom that says UPS.
GPS poster and problem solving strategies. And then when you click that gear, you'll see these attachments that will open up as well. The new vocabulary that we have for this set unit, there's a lot of them. Notice the purple words are the ones that are review, and the rest of the words are the words that you'll be teaching the kids. There are some vocabulary word wall activities that I've provided for you. There's three. There's one on baseball, which since we're basically having the World Series going on right now, um, that might be a fun thing to play. And then charades and hot seat, which would be a fun little activity to do with vocabulary words. Thank you for listening to this presentation. The PowerPoint will be available. Um, I uh, ask, call me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help. Bye.